Yeah, we got EMP. Alright, I think I have EMP too. 3, 2, 1. Nice, nice. Mapping. What's going on everybody, it's Frito here for your Overwatch and today we're going to be covering a very important subject that can really unlock some W's for you if you know how to utilize playing with a Sombra teammate or how to be sure to coordinate with your team when you're playing Sombra yourself. There are some rules and some things that you're going to have to know to play by, but we'll cover the major pitfalls and the things you're going to want to look out for in today's video. First, we'll take this from the Sombra's perspective. I think it's very important that that player knows to coordinate with what her team is doing, not the other way around. It is far too easy when you're on any mobility character, really, to not realize how long it takes for your team to catch up to where you are, how many Genjis and Tracers are far in the back line before it's time to go in and your team is struggling to try to catch up to how fast they can be. Sombra has incredible map distance mobility, so when you're setting up these engagements, it's as simple as watching carefully the triangles of your teammates across the map and waiting for them to close. Communication can help you with this too, are you guys at the choke yet, blah blah blah, but you shouldn't even need that when you are the stealth infiltrator character that Sombra can be. Here I bide my time a bit behind enemy lines, and the timing on this engage is just clean and good. Whereas if I go a few seconds earlier, instead of waiting that sort of awkward amount of time where I'm like hoping I'm not getting spotted behind enemy lines, then that entire fight goes differently. Either I waste EMP or I die out of position. There's a big percentage of responsibility on the Sombra to make sure that she synergizes with everyone else. And if you are one of these teammates trying to coordinate with a Sombra who's doing a backstab attack, getting on the comms to really reinforce that synergy to let the Sombra know what's going on, because you can't always just see the triangles. I mean, maybe you're getting stalled out by a Tracer who's fighting you at the choke, and you're focusing her, and you need the Sombra to wait before she engages on the main backline. Any information like that can be very helpful in making sure that everybody's fighting the same stuff at the same time. Now, the other difficulty with synergizing with Sombra is knowing how to play with her. The truth is, she's a hybrid through and through, and like I've said in a previous video, it's far better to think about characters filling a slot in a team comp, which can change from game to game, rather than focusing in on a specific role that you're supposed to have all the time. That's not really a thing. Far better is to understand the game as slots in a team comp, because depending on where a character is placed within the team comp, it's going to function much differently. If Sombra is in the DPS slot, you simply will have less damage output than even a comparable flanker or a range damage dealer. She plays flanky, she plays supportive, and she's not as good at brawling as other characters, but that might be okay depending on the team comp you're playing against. Now, if you're playing her to pick up a somewhat significant portion of your healing, you'll have less healing too. It's a trade-off one way or another. Either you have overall less damage output or you have less powerful healing. Either way, it's important to know what type of comp your team has and know how that's going to change how you're going to have to play. If Sombra's in the DPS position, much more important for you to focus fire together, because if you don't, very quickly can you find that everyone can struggle to win their own 1v1 duels. Because Sombra's better at disabling something, like a D.Va for instance, hacking her and then everyone can just shoot their low damage into D.Va and because of focus fire they just win the fight anyway. But if Sombra's in the DPS category and you're expecting her to get a flanker pickoff output like a Genji or Tracer might, especially against death Bally style comps with McCree or Torb, she just either doesn't do enough damage fast enough or doesn't have the tool set to really win a fight convincingly by herself. It's not really what she's built to do. In fact, I would go one step further and say just focus the tanks because Sombra's actually not bad at damaging tanks and she can disable their mobility and damage denial abilities. And that's the way Lunatic High plays Sombra. Now, if you're playing Sombra in the healer category, then the entire team has to play more hesitant, more decisive. And this very quickly can be difficult for many matchmaking players to do, as I've noticed. A lot of times I see players engage in a way that is reminiscent of like a World of Warcraft raid or something, as if they're expecting the team fight to last forever, and they can just heal themselves, or dying doesn't really matter, they can get resurrected. I don't know, I didn't play World of Warcraft. You know what I mean, though. Like in a more extended raid boss fight, where everyone just sort of spamming their abilities, but without much rhyme or reason. You can't play Sombra in the support position like that at all. When Sombra's in the support position, you actually can increase your focus fire 
and damage output because, of course, she's a hybrid. It's a little more comfortable oftentimes for her to play in that slot because then she isn't expected to go win duels on her own. And as soon as you catch somebody out, you more convincingly win the fight, but you also, as I'm sure many of you know, can more easily convincingly lose the fight because you don't have the same amount of normal sustain that you would from picking another healer in that slot. So how do you go about playing around this? Well, it's especially important for your tanks to make sure that they're only taking fights that they either can win or they can back out of to heal and hopefully charge up even EMP. Anubis second is probably the best map in the entire game for this playstyle, but Route 66 first, or the Oasis map with a little hole in it, all have mega health packs fairly close to the fight, and the way as a somber player's teammate that you play around this is to both in turn play somewhat aggro, but disengage heavy. What I mean by that is, you want to poke and prod, but be ready for an escape plan to get to the health pack. Because you don't win a straight up engagement, because they have more healing than you do, and you don't want them to slowly encroach onto you either, you kind of have to be trading out a bit and getting active in the fight so that EMP charges faster, because if you just sort of stand around and let your other healer heal you when they don't need to, you're not gonna be able to chain react those EMP spams like you otherwise would. And then when you do start to do this, it really unlocks the power of Sombra. It looks outrageously overpowered. Because not only when you play smart enough to disengage so you don't die, you go back into the fight with full health, and before you know it, Sombra's gonna have EMP every fight. And if the enemy can't use their abilities every fight, it creates a massive problem for them. There's pro teams who still don't even know how to defeat this, and I gotta be honest, it's not easy to. It would take an entirely separate video on how to even defeat EMP spam. The short answer is taking a lot of characters that are either strong against Sombra directly, or still do their job even when they don't have their abilities. Not many of those in the game exist, however. So essentially, the name of the game is to not overcommit as a Sombra teammate into a fight. It's kind of a recurring theme because that was especially important for yesterday's video, which operates under similar principles. But the power that you're going to have when you don't overextend to lose your life, get your value, and then get out and use your lack of HP as a benefit to charge EMP faster, that's how you really make Sombra start to look scary. Now, there's been a lot of talk recently about countering Orisa Torb, Junkrat Spam, those really scary death balls that can just sit on Horizon first and seemingly never die. And it's this sort of hokey pokey where you put your left foot in, you put your left foot out, you charge EMP, and before you know it, you have an ult stack and you win the fight for free. It's that kind of engagement where you're like poking and prodding and not losing your life, but trying to find an opening at the same time. It's balancing that sort of stuff that is both good against those comps, but also charges you up EMP. I wouldn't say Sombra is good herself against Larissa Torb because she can't harass anything, but if her teammate synergize with her in the way that I'm describing, then the other counter to Orisa Torb, which is ult stacks, of course, can really shine through. So the name of the game of taking advantage of Sombra is Styles of Engagement, which reminds me of a phrase that I want to use more often, my Overwatch version of greetings and salutations. It is clean engagements to you. Because really, the entirety of Overwatch is all about clean engagements. Ignore damage medals, ignore picks, ignore everything about the game that's going on until you critically think about how your team's engaging, how the enemy's engaging. Because once you get that worked out, well, that's the key to just about every comp in Overwatch, but... Sombra especially requires the team to know how to play in a way that doesn't get them killed. I made an entirely separate video about this, that good Winstons don't need healing, and that was the point of that one. In order to synergize with a Sombra, well, you need to be able to engage in a way where you can be in a fight and get out without needing to be pocketed in order to be bailed out. This is definitely a difficult playstyle, it's difficult to do, but as soon as you unlock that, then you make your Sombra into a star player and you win convincingly. It is a sharp playstyle for sure, risk-reward, but mastering the disengage is going to allow that to just be an easy win for you. And speaking of clean engagements, I want to look at this beautiful EMP engage. EMP up by the second fight, thanks to good play by the team. And this is how you reap the rewards of playing the more difficult Sombra comp playstyle. The comp comes in, EMP down on the Zen, drops him down to one hit kill zone, and I land on him. It's just over from there. Genji can't reflect nor run away. Free team fight with one ultimate 
such a massive advantage when you're able to take the risk of having a more difficult playstyle that really pays off. That's the way Sombra comps work. No matter where she's placed in the team comp, you can think of it like this. An Ana pick is trying to set up for the tanks to carry because she provides so much value to their health pools, whereas the Sombra pick ideally makes you more scary in this skirmishy playstyle and has a stronger ult fight because her ult charge is so much faster. So your big team engages are going to be stronger, but your overall sustain is going to be lower. Sombra's still good, everybody. Even in Season 6, good for all the reasons why I loved picking her in Season 5, but perhaps even more important in order to break those turtley playstyles that a lot of you say that you're coming across, it'll be important that you add this careful engagement charge for a big engage to really break up those comps that can be very difficult to bust open. But hopefully with these tips we gave today, you can have a better time synergizing with your teammates, either playing with or as Sombra. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. It really does help us out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content. If you haven't already, please subscribe because we upload each and every day. So you're going to want to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. Link in the description, you can check out our Twitter where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes as well as our Destiny channel. If you're a fellow Guardian, be sure to hit the subscribe button on our other channel. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. See you guys next time.